Give some money, get some house. Mortgages. There is a lot to unpack when it comes to these bad boys. Canada has gone through so many unique challenges and changes since mortgages came to be. I'm sure you're wondering some pretty extraordinary questions. You know, like, why do they exist? How are they created? It's a tale as old as time, except without the Disney princess aspect. In the early 1900s, mortgages were merely just long-term loans with monthly interest, until some historical world events had their day, aka the Great Depression and two world wars. Those events sparked some serious economic downturn, which led to a lot of people being unable to repay their loans. So, in 1935, the first national housing legislation was created, and they called it the Dominion Housing Act. The act provided $20 million in loans to help finance new homes. In 1938, the first of many national housing acts was passed. All of these exist to provide Canadians with housing and also to create job opportunities. In 1946, the Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation was born but it's now known as the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. To avoid confusion, because that's not what learning is all about, let's just call them CMHC moving forward. Their first order of action? Long-term amortization and mortgages, of course. CMHC introduced long-term mortgage loans that would balance repaying both interest and principal on a monthly basis. Over, say, how does 25 years sound? In the 1950s, CMHC focused on housing veterans returning from World War II. At that time, 60% of new construction were single-family homes, and CMHC made these properties more attainable by introducing a mortgage insurance model in 1954. Moving into the 1960s, CMHC worked on redeveloping and improving residential homes in need. They also switched the focus of new builds from single-family homes to multi-family dwellings. The affordability of apartments was appealing in a post-war economic boom and baby boomers and new immigrants took full advantage. In the 1970s, the economy dealt with a mass amount of inflation. They blamed the great inflation on things like oil prices and market speculation. But it was actually the financing of budget deficits that caused the economy to blow up yet again. During this time, interest rates began to rise to extremes, as high as 20% and borrowers became unable to afford housing. So, a shift from fully amortized mortgages to partially amortized mortgages began. This change would protect both the lender and the borrower from market fluctuations. Instead of 20-year terms, you'd have one to five-year terms over that 20-year period. As you know, after any inflation comes a crash, and that's exactly what happened in 1980. With mass unemployment, CMHC attempted to convince more Canadians to buy homes. The government introduced homeownership savings plans, assisted programs, and changes to the Tax Act, which would reduce the amount of taxes Canadians owned on their main residence. Also came the Canadian Home Stimulation Program to provide grants to homeowners, the Canada Mortgage Renewal Plan to assist any Canadian having a difficult time renewing their mortgages, and the Graduated Payment Mortgage Plan to help new homeowners with rising costs of homeownership by lowering initial monthly mortgage payments. Another National Housing Act of 1985 was created to promote construction of new houses, modernization of existing houses, improvement of housing and living conditions for Canadians. Are you still with me? Puppy break. All was well in the world of mortgages in the 1990s, minus another recession. So, in 1992, the Canadian government introduced the Home Buyers Plan. The first time Home Buyers Plan helps Canadians buy their first home. In the 90s, you could borrow up to $25,000 tax-free from your RRSP to fund your down payment. Or you could combine with a partner who is also a first-time buyer to borrow $50,000. To qualify for this program, you must be a first-time home buyer, which is anyone who, in the last four years, has not purchased a house or lived in a home that was owned by their spouse. This 15-year, interest-free loan, from yourself, requires annual repayment no more than two years after borrowing the money from your RRSP. In 1996, CMHC created an automated insurance system that would make approval for mortgage loan insurance quick and easy. And in 1999, the National Housing Act and the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation Act changed yet again, this time to allow a 5% down payment. Once we got through the 90s, it was time for the 2000s. Aside from Neopets and the rise of social media, housing was still a thing. I know, who would have guessed that? In 2001, CMHC introduced Canada Mortgage Bonds, which would ensure low-cost mortgage interest. In 2005, CMHC created a green refund of 10% on mortgage loan insurance premiums for homeowners who buy, build, or renovate to get an energy-efficient home. Up until now, only 25-year mortgages could get mortgage insurance. In 2006 and 2007, CMHC was all about insurance. In that time, they switched it up and announced that mortgages with amortizations up to 40 years could now be insured, as well as interest-only mortgages for the first 10 years, zero down payment mortgages, and mortgages for self-employed borrowers. However, in 2008, during the global credit crisis, hey, are you seeing this economic disaster pattern? The government shortened the maximum amortization period from 40 years to 35 years, 
and it was now required for buyers to have a 5% down payment. Of the tighter restrictions introduced in 2008, you were also required to provide documentation of a property's value and a borrower's income sources and income total. You also needed to have a minimum credit score of 620, with few exceptions. If you've seen The Big Short, you might already know this story. Basically, it's like that kid who breaks the rules and ruins it for everyone. Whew, what a time to be alive. We finally entered the 2010s, and I'm still having a great time. A lot changes in the next decade, so buckle in, friends. In 2010, the government introduced three new rules. They mandated that any mortgage with a down payment of less than 20% must be qualified using the benchmark five-year mortgage qualifying rate. The maximum amount for insured refinances was reduced to 90%, and a 20% down payment was now required for small rental properties. Having so much fun adding new rules, they added another three in 2011. Maximum amortizations were again reduced to 30 years from 35. Insured refinances were reduced from 90% to 85%, and home equity lines of credit no longer qualified for government mortgage insurance. In 2014, CMHC announced they will start paying a risk fee of 3.25% on all insurance premiums. In 2016, the government made some significant changes to how we buy homes today. At this time, it was announced that for homes above $500,000, a 10% down payment is required for the portion of the mortgage above half a million dollars. Also, as of 2016, all insured mortgages must be stress-tested aka can you handle this mortgage total using the five-year qualification rate. The Government of Canada eliminated the availability of low-value insurance for certain types of mortgages, like borrowers taking equity out of their home, mortgages with amortization periods over 25 years, home purchase prices over a million dollars, borrowers with credit scores under 600, and investment properties. In 2017, CMHC announced premium price increases for any borrower with a down payment between 5% and 25%. They also introduced a 0.01% admin fee. Most other mortgage lenders followed suit with the increase. In 2019, the home buyer's plan withdrawal limit was raised to $35,000 individually or $70,000 combined with a partner. They also announced a shared equity program where CMHC provides 5% of the purchase price on existing homes and 10% of the purchase price on new builds. This support is for default insured purchases only and the annual household income must be less than $120,000. The insured mortgage and incentive amount cannot exceed four times the participant's annual household income. Ah, <sighs> now to today, in 2020. It's likely expected that many more changes will come as we deal with the global pandemic that is COVID-19. Because, if you haven't noticed by now, many moments in mortgage history come from these worldwide economic downturns. We did it. We are now experts in the history of Canadian mortgages. Who knew it would be so fast? And so fascinating.